This is Carla. <laughs> welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome as well. Hello, hello. So today I want to show you guys how I make an A-line ball skirt. So I feel like the trend nowadays for gowns, especially wedding dresses, um, is all about convertible dresses because I feel like people invest a lot of money on their wedding dresses and it just makes more sense to buy something that's convertible, something you can rewear. Um, I have an English mesh that I'll be using for today's project. And um, that's really basically it. Just this one. I mean, it's literally just like a ball skirt and it will be a little bit see-through because she will be wearing like a mini dress underneath it. So the mini will have some appliques on it which will kind of peek through the dress or the skirt so it's pretty sexy um, it will be floor sweeping um, I'm gonna leave a little bit of the train won't be too long it will be just long enough and easy to manage uh, the dress will be worn for like a bridal party so it doesn't make sense to make the train super long where it's you know hard to maneuver as it get later into the night, obviously she's going to remove that skirt and you know, shift some legs. So I guess that's it. Let's start. So I, my secret here is I use an elastic band. I feel like if you have something thicker, that would be better. Um, but what I do is I basically just and since the waist is right down here and it dips at the waist I don't want the elastic to ride up I'm just gonna go ahead and place pins on both sides that way it doesn't go up it stays down there where we need it to be So this is the selvage up here. You just want to make sure you're at a 90 degree angle here. So I like to personally start on the center front panel. So I want a center front panel, um, side front panel, and I think I'm gonna just use one panel for the entire back. So what I do is I basically just like place it under the elastic like so so I want a little bit of gather on the waist nothing too crazy again pin it to the center front and you kind of just like even it out So again, if you don't feel comfortable cutting your fabric on the mannequin, feel free to do it on a table or the floor. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it because this is again the right height that I want. So <laughs> probably think I'm crazy, but you just wanna basically I'm just using the floor as my guide. And the key here is not changing the angle of how you hold your scissors. Let me cut it. 
it. You should be okay. I feel like if you're working on a muslin, um, you should definitely try this trick. Okay, so that's pretty straight. After I do this, I... Well, for the center front panel, we're only gonna do one, obviously. For the side front panel, I'm just gonna go ahead and drive one side, and then um, I can lay that one flat on the floor and copy that for the other side. Because at the end of the day, I still... I don't wanna, like, drape the whole thing on the mannequin because I still want it to look... I still want it to be even. Um, so one way to do that for sure is to just drape the half side or just mirror it to the other. The mannequin is actually a little bit longer than my client a little bit. That way I can just, I can still adjust it. So after I cut this, I mean, it's pretty clean actually right now. <laughs> I'm like a pro at cutting now, I'm just kidding. Go ahead and actually lay this on the floor and kind of like, you know, clean it up. So. Before cutting the excess fabric at the waist, I just pin the gathers mm. in place. So after cutting that center front piece, I go ahead and fold the fabric like so and then cut along the weft. I then drape the side front panel the same exact way I draped the center front piece. And like I said, to keep it symmetrical, I'm gonna use that same piece as my pattern to cut the left side of the skirt. I haven't shaped it just yet, so you can see it's a little bit off over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and true it out as I cut the fabric. I then place the pieces back onto the mannequin just so I get a better idea of what it looks like and see if I like it so far. I'm ready for neck panel. I have an audience, she's listening. She's I'm basically just gonna cut this the same length on the side as the side front bodice or the side front panel and then it just gradually gets longer in the back. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and then again shape it on the floor and whatnot. So Yay! What do you think, Ocean? Do you like it? Do you like it? Ocean, no. So far, that's it. And then I'm gonna cut um, the top part, shape it, and then replicate. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I swear. Jesus. Okay, so after cutting the back panels, I went ahead and pinned together the center back so I can sew it. I'm just gonna leave about seven inches from, seven to eight inches from the waist for the center back zipper and then basically stitch from here down to the hem. I then sewed up all the seams except for the waist. And to achieve the gathered effect along the waist, I start by adding two rows of base stitching with half an inch spacing between and manually gather the fabric by pulling the threads. I then proceed to cutting a strip of fabric, which will be my waistband, which measures 75 inches long and two and a half inches wide. So this is gonna be our center front. Side seams right here and then our center back. Stitch these close, the tail of our waistband. Stitch both sides and keep these open because this is where we sandwich our skirt panels. Mm. 
Before joining the waistband to my skirt, I make sure that I match up my notches first and then go ahead and pin it right sides together. And then I do another parallel stitch in between the two base stitching that I just did. What we're doing here is just sandwiching the skirt into the waistband like so. So I'm going to stitch on the ditch, um, probably stitch it on five for now. Again, because I still might need to unsew and sew this after the fitting in case I need to do some adjustments. Okay, so my manager approved. This is what it looks like right now. I'm gonna leave this base stitching here for now because there's a big chance that I'm gonna need to redo the waistband. Because the next step is for me to add the horse hair. Back is okay too. I like the length so far. Like I said, this is not my client size, so I just make it fit on this mannequin just so we get a better idea of what it looks like when it sits right at the waist. And now I'm ready for my horse hair. And since horse hair takes a while to sew, this is the part where I play the new episodes of Grey's Anatomy. If you haven't seen it, the second episode, the last part of it, don't even. Cry fast. I cried rivers. I mean, come on, Derek's eyes? Like Shonda Rhimes need to figure out a way to bring Derek back. Like the show is just not the same without him. Like, I don't even care if they bring him back as a dog. Like, I seriously don't care. <laughs> Just like, bring him back. Anyway, this is what it looks like after spending another 30 minutes pressing the horse hair. Ta-da! She likes chocolate covered strawberries and wine. She likes notes that say I love you all the time. Roses at your feet, baby girl, be mine. Baby girl, be mine. <laughs> say thank you, Ocean. Say thank you all for watching Mom's video today. I hope you all had fun. We'll see you again next week. Bye. Do you like it? What do you think of it? Hmm? Ocean likes it. Do you like it? Oh, me too. Me too, Bobo. Bye. <laughs> it's so dark. <laughs>